Hey guys, it's me. Sorry, apparently I had a um, not so great reception. So hopefully the connection is better. Come back, Anita, Bianca. I saw Victoria signing on. <laughs> the internets. Welcome, welcome. I am Dr. Swiner. Thank you for taking some time out. I know. I just got the uh, inbox message from Dr. Victoria saying we lost you. Hopefully I'm back and you can hear me okay. Howie. <laughs> Come on, Internet. Hello, hello. Well, as the rest of you come in the room, I am Dr. Nicole Swiner, a.k.a. Doc Swiner, and I am so honored. Hi, there you are, Bianca. Welcome back. <laughs> so there's Anita. Very good. Okay. Hopefully. Hi, Catherine. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Hi. I'm doing okay, Ms. Uh, Dr. Victoria. Okay. Um, I am Doc Swiner, and I'm so honored, so pleased to be join you guys good i see some thumbs up so that means we're doing all right um so glad to join you guys howdy how are you to join you guys with the minority medical mentoring group this is a phenomenal group that i wish i had as i was coming up through medical school and residency hi bianca where are you guys from where are you guys from and hopefully my reception will hang on i was i was preemptively apologizing for if my two children wake up in the middle of their nap or the end of their nap, the middle of our talk time, you may see them come in and out. So, you know, that's how motherhood it is. Sometimes the kids wake up and they show up when they want to. So if you see them, ignore them. <laughs> hey, hey, how are you doing? Hey, Chicago, all right. Welcome, everybody. Good. Good, good, good. All right, so if you can hear me and see me okay, and if the internet will hang, hang on for us, the reception is good, then we'll go ahead and kind of get started. So I am Nicole Swiner. I hail from uh, DMV, hey. I hail from Goose Creek, South Carolina, which is a suburb of Charleston. So that's where my, my family roots are. I moved around a lot growing up. So <clears throat> actually was born in Columbia, South Carolina. My family members are from Charleston. Um, but we moved around a lot because my dad worked uh, many years for Federal Express. So with each movement upward, we moved away. So I claim a bit of Memphis, Tennessee, uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, Houston, Texas, and then back to Charleston uh, where my, my family is uh, permanently. But I am here working and living in the Raleigh-Durham area of North Carolina. So I'm in Durham, North Carolina which is part of the triangle, if you're familiar. Um, so Charlotte is about an hour and a half away and the Raleigh-Durham Chapel Hill area is called the triangle. And so we're all within 20 minutes of one another in, in this area of North Carolina. And I love it, love it, love it, love it. So if you guys, any of you all are in the North Carolina area and you ever wanna link up, please don't hesitate to let me know. Um, you can find me here with the Minority Medical Mentoring Group. And thanks again for uh, inviting me and having me, Dr. Victoria, who's your phenomenal leader. Um, but catch me, I have, you know, a couple of pages on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, reach out to me on email at cnswiner at gmail.com. And, uh, I'd love to talk to you guys. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about my journey <clears throat> and please leave your questions, ask what you you know, need to ask, get out of it, what you need to get out of it. I don't want to bore you and talk you to death. So even if you're catching the replay, hello, if you're catching it, um, feel free to leave your questions and I'll try to come back later and fill in uh, the answers if I didn't get to see you live. But, um, so like I said, grew up in, or was born in Columbia, ultimately made it, made it back to the Goose Creek, uh, South Carolina area. Hey, um, Anita, by the way, my husband and my in-laws are um, from the DMV area, from Southeast Washington, DC. So I have big, big love for DC. But graduated from high school in, hi Jamie, um, in Charleston, South Carolina, Goose Creek, South Carolina. Went to uh, undergrad here, um, which was my first taste of North Carolina here at Duke University. Went back home to Charleston um, at MUSC and did my medical school training there. Anybody at MUSC, by the way? Um, did MUSC for four years. Came back here, decided I want to be in this area in the triangle. Thanks for putting up my email. Yeah, you guys feel free to contact me at any time. Um, came back to this area for... Uh, family medicine residency at the University of Chapel Hill in North Carolina. 
and spent uh, three years there doing my family medicine training and then just stayed, just stayed. Loved this area. Um, when I <clears throat> graduated from college, moved to medical school, was dating someone who was here before I met my husband. So I always knew kind of, that I had kind of this, this draw back to this area and loved this area. You know, I, I essentially grew up in North Carolina, you know, with um, college and, you know, finding my way and figuring out who I was, et cetera. And then I had this boyfriend that was here. So I kind of knew that I wanted to pull back toward the North Carolina area. Being from a small area in Charleston, it was kind of the, you know, a little bit closer to a kind of a bigger, bigger city living <laughs> situation and experience that I wanted. Um, loved the UNC program because when I was in medical school, I was able to do my um, uh, externship here for a year during my last year of medical school. And I spent a month or two here um, with the program at UNC and fell in love with it. Loved the warmth, the friendliness, the camaraderie, the family feel uh, for the program here at UNC. So I knew that it was going to be first on my list. So I was blessed to be able to come back here and um, got my first job through a local practice owned by UNC here in Durham. We were one of the few uh, off-campus outpatient clinics, not in Chapel Hill, but owned by UNC out of Chapel Hill, but in Durham, which I said is, you know, 20 minutes away from the main hospital from the Chapel Hill area. And um, loved it, my first real job. Hi, Alicia, welcome. Loved it, thrived, and then Two years into my uh, becoming, you know, a fresh new doc on the scene and uh, gaining my patient population and getting comfortable and doing outreach and getting rooted in the community, the hospital decided they wanted to close our office. You know, prior to me joining, the office had actually been open for another a, a decade or so. So the, the practice itself had been well established. And um, my now partner, Dr. Chula Curry, was one of the founding members. And so it was it was a, a shock. Um, especially to the older docs that had established the practice, you know, there was no um, inclination that the, the doors were going to be closed until the guys on the hill came down in their suits and said, not really making the money we want, we want y'all to make. You live in North Carolina? What part, Alicia? Are you close to Raleigh, Durham? Uh, we should link up. So that was the moment that we decided that you know, we we loved the 10,000 plus patients we had been, they had been serving for 10 years. I had been serving for about two and a half. And we said, we don't want to leave. We love this area. I just bought a house, you know, a couple of minutes away from the clinic. Um, this is where we wanted to be. So we overnight, literally, Wilmington, not too far. I'm in Wilmington sometimes. It's about what, two and a half away? Near the beach? That's nice. Um, so we overnight became entrepreneurs. Who knew? I had no MBA, I had no business training. Um, I went to medical school to be a doctor. So who knew? Oh, excellent, Alicia, yes. Um, Dr. Victoria left my email address um, earlier in the comments. So please, please, let's link up. So I became an entrepreneur. Never really, never really had any idea that I wanted to open my own practice, be my own business owner, but you know, God puts us in those predicaments and he makes it happen the way it's supposed to happen so we went with it but to back up just a little bit because I know we're talking a lot more about our medical training um, medical school was a struggle for me you know even you know going to Duke and um, you know being blessed to get a really good education there I you know I had to relearn how to study as we all know and you guys tell me are you you know first year second years are you residents tell me where you are in your training but for me, uh, my social skills have always been great. You know, I'm, I'm an extrovert, so I love people and learning and gaining from people and being a little bit of an empath. But um, science and math, I, you know, I had to, to work with. I had to really take the time to focus on. And so high school was a breeze, you know, ace that. But then starting at Duke, um, I, I struggled. My first year was hard. Um, especially with a lot of the chemistries and the bios. Um, a lot of my friends were choosing to major in, you know, the the organic chemistries and the engineering. And I was like, mm, knowing myself, that's probably not the route I'm going to take. I mean, clearly I have to take those pre-med courses that I need to for, you know, for prereqs. But I knew that I was going to be much more of a hands-on person. I didn't want to be stuck in a lab. Hi, Danny D. Welcome. So I chose anatomy as a major. 
actually called uh, biological anthropology and anatomy because I knew that I needed more visual things to um, that I could you know put my hands on that I could see pictures of that I could remember and not in an organic chemistry way because that was horrible but <laughs> you know in anatomy lab where I'm dissecting I can see it I can you know put it to memory um, was going to be an easier route for me so I chose a route that I knew was best for me. Um, but again, because you have to take the organics and the bios and all of that as prerequisites, um, med P's residents, welcome. Wonderful, wonderful, Bianca. Um, I knew that I needed help. Um, and I've never been, uh, one to not ask for help. So if one life lesson, especially in our training, but life lesson is never be afraid to ask for help. Okay. So I got a tutor. I kept it real and I got a tutor and it saved my, um, my scholarly life. It probably saved my personal life because, you know, I don't want to fail out of school and have to go back home. Um, but you know, if that happens and you pick yourself up and you keep it up, you keep it moving. But I knew that I needed help. So I found someone who was smarter than me, who could take the time, explain things in plain English and that I could pick up from. And I had to relearn how to learn, you know, high school learning is different from college. It's different from medical school. It's different from residency. So I, I had to adjust. Um, and knowing this, you know, thankfully I got through college, you know, with, with extra help and tutoring and talking to my TAs and all that. Once I got into medical school, again, fresh new environment, goo gobs of information coming at you at once, having to soak it in, regurgitate it, again, struggled. So I went and, you know, put my pride aside and said, I'm going to get some help. Went to the CAP Center or I guess the Counseling psycholo- you know, Psychology Center and did some you know personality testing um, to figure out what kind of personality I had and what kind of learning, um, what kind of learning, um, I don't know, style I had. Uh, right, right, life lesson, Dr. Victoria. Um, and they taught me that I'm an audiovisual learner. I needed to record my lectures. I needed to go home and make notes and highlight and color code and make graphs and study consistently in order to get it. I was so like shocked and amazed at some of my colleagues who were able to like, you know, go to class, go home, study for an hour or so and seemingly ace the exams. I don't know how that happened for them, but I needed to, you know, I needed to pre-read prior to the lecture. I needed to record the lecture and that night I needed to review the lecture. Like, and I needed to color code and make note cards that fit for me. So second life lesson, life lesson is know who you are personality wise and what your learning style is. Right. Right. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, Danny, I think we just learn differently. I, you know, there are all these theories about standardized testing and, and boards and all that stuff and how the questions are structured. And there, there seems to be a lot of obstacles for us, uh, for people of color and, and who knows the way we grew up or the way that we speak when we are at home, who knows. But, um, I had to, you know, again, put my pride aside and figure out what worked best for me. So that worked for me. I also liked to study in groups. I needed to, again, I was an audiovisual learner. I needed to hear myself say things out loud. So I, you know, found a group of girls that were committed to one another, you know, meeting in the library at least once a week and um, quizzing each other. And we would throw things out and ask questions and make each other go to the board and draw things in color so we could during test taking time, you reflect back and you can see those things. And that's how I learned. So to this day, (laughs) I'm still an audio visual learner. So when I am studying for the boards and get, or, you know, going through step, when I had to do step one, two, and et cetera, in residency, I had to, to go back to those things. So I had to go, I, I'm one that has to take a course. You know, I like to feel like I'm back in the study mode seriously for three to four days. So uh, with family medicine, and I'm sure they have this for everybody else, but you, you can pay to go to these board review courses where you spend a couple of days, hardcore, sitting in front of lecturers, highlight, big binders, making note cards, and going through the motions of that. Um, and now they have apps on your phone that you can do test taking questions with. Highlight Latifa, welcome. Um, they have, uh, you know, online questions uh, where you can do you know, click answers. And and that is what helps me. So know who you are and what your learning style is. Right. (laughs) Um, so thankfully had some good tutoring, had some, you know, learned fairly early after, 
you know, not doing so well the first couple of months of my first year in medical school, learning early that I needed help and getting the help that I needed. Having good role models was another thing that that was helpful for me. I was blessed to have a couple of particularly minority um, role models, both uh, at medical school at NUSC and then also just in my personal life, my dentist who I'd grown up with since, you know, middle school was a black male. His wife happened to be a black female physician. Hey, welcome. So, you know, sitting at their dinner table and crying my eyes out and telling them about my problems. Hello, Arthur. Welcome was um, essential, essential for my development. Um, My pastor, huge, huge role model and support for me. Um, You know, again, know when you need support. My pastor uh, was always committed to to pushing me. He was always proud to have a budding doctor coming out of his congregation. <laughs> um, and we were very, he's very close to my family. So he was always there to pray for me, always there to do counseling. Um, I, you know, had some struggles at home. Um, I'm never, you know, embarrassed to say, you know, my mother, um, who unfortunately passed away, had uh, issues with depression and alcoholism. And so I was struggling with that during medical school. Um, and so I needed to talk about it. I needed to tell someone, I needed to pray, I needed to have someone hear me, listen to me, give me advice. So know when you need help. You know, this is Mental Health Awareness Month being May, and I'm all about being mentally um, healthy and emotionally healthy. And so asking for help um, and doing what you need to do to get yourself together is essential, especially during the tough times of being in grad school, medical school, dental school, law school, all types of, of, of times in your life. If you need help, go and get it. Have um, someone smarter than you sit across from you <laughs> and help you through those tough times, whether it's your pastor, your primary care, your psychologist, your psychiatrist, your therapist, whatever, your massage therapist, whatever, get, get the help that you need. And so that has been very helpful throughout my life and throughout tough times, uh, particularly once my mom uh, passed away. Um, when you're just reflecting on everything, right? Yeah, you're welcome. I, I know it, it, it's, you know, because I am a, a full, full-time full family doc, um, you know, that focuses a lot on women's health, mental health, minority health, you know, I do talk about this a lot. The, the creating a safe space for people to feel okay about expressing their feelings. So don't be afraid. Step out of faith. Go get the help that you need. So those are all pearls from... <laughs> what I felt like helped me to succeed over the years. So where are we? So uh, medical school we got through. Uh, Residency we got through. Um, Residency was a breeze. And it was because I chose the right program for me. I chose, like I said, because I am an extrovert, I I need a warm, friendly environment. I need to talk to other people who are like-minded and be supported by them. I chose the right program at UNC Chapel Hill. Um, which I'm still affiliate, affiliated with to this day, even though our practice is now a private practice and we're no longer owned by the hospital. I still am very close to those that I um, went to school with, or excuse me, went to residency with, some of my attendings that were there that uh, were mentors for me. And I still teach students through UNC um, Family Medicine because of my love for the program and what they gave to me, I want to give back. But um Residency was great for me because it allowed me to, um, you know, I didn't have, it wasn't all about test taking. It was about putting that stuff into action and having a patient relationship, you know, building a rapport with people so that you could help them. And so residency was wonderful for me. I loved residency. It was I mean, it was a struggle because UNC Chapel Hill is a pretty um, severe program in terms of, you know, resident hours and working hours. We delivered a lot of babies to care a lot of sick people and inpatient. UNC Chapel Hill is very heavy in internal medicine, um, urgent care, and OB. So if you're not that kind of person, <laughs> don't go there. But it's a, it's a wonderful, well-rounded program. I came out feeling like I could do anything I wanted to do. If I wanted to run a community emergency room, I could do that. If I wanted to run an urgent care, I could do that. If I wanted to deliver babies, I could do that. If I wanted to uh, do vasectomies and... Um, circumcisions and IUDs and joint injections and biopsies. I could do that. And I do a lot of that stuff now in my clinical practice and I love it. So I'm glad that I chose the discipline that I chose. Now, fast forward, you know, so left residency, graduated, started working full time, um, dropped the loser that I was dating (laughs) before, bless his heart, 
he served a purpose. You know, he was there for a reason. But met the love of my life and got married um, here, started a family. So now I'm a full-time working wife with soon to have two children. Uh, the stress became overwhelming, right? So we're trying to do all these things, handle all these things, take care of our patients, take care of our family. You know, we still have our parent, you know, our, my, my father, my in-laws, you know, taking care of all these people. Uh, after I had my first child, I had some incident. We still, we're still not clear what happened, but shortly after coming back from maternity leave, I had an episode, we'll call it that, at work, um, where I had some, what well, we're calling it, after seeing neuro and all that, we're calling it an atypical migraine. I thought it was a TIA, so my ortho thought it was a, a pinched nerve, you know, neuropathy. We don't know what happened. I felt like I passed out, went on one side. Long story short, of course, we're going to talk about stress, right? Being overwhelmed, having the burden of juggling all these balls in the air um, is overwhelming. And so from that, I, myself and my husband and my dad, who was like, wait a minute now, what are you doing? You're doing too much. Um, we sat down and we said, you know what? Let's restructure this. You know, we know that you are, you know, successful as a doc. You've, you've done these things, but let's focus on what's important. And what's important is, like I said, our mental health, our emotional health, our physical health, um, our family, and then ourselves. Uh, what I did in becoming the superwoman complex expert is flipping that. Self-care first, yourself first, and then everyone else after that. Sounds selfish, right? But it's not. It's actually selfless. Because if you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not putting yourself first, you won't have anything else to give to the people that you love and that depend on you. So I started writing. Um, I, I started writing uh, for a local newspaper about medical topics, very heavy on mental health, women's health. Um, started sharing it on social media. And in about five or six years, I decided I wanted to put it together in a book. And I called it How to Avoid the Superwoman Complex. Right? Lessons learned from me, <laughs> from my development through life. And now as a working mom and wife, daughter, sister, friend. And what I preached and taught to my patients and my loved ones on a daily basis about the importance of self-care and work-life balance. And now that has become my ministry. Teaching others, particularly women, but both men and women, but particularly women about superwoman syndrome, the superwoman complex, how we uh, can do better with work-life balance so that we can help others that need us. Okay? So the book, you know, Becoming an Author, um, Doing More Speaking has been wonderful for me and has been food to my soul and it helps me treat my patients better. So now I, you know, I feel like because I am kind of living this thing, you know, I'm going through the motions of being, of being a super or trying not to be a superwoman. I can now No, Latifah, my husband is not a physician. Thank goodness. So we can actually talk about non-medical things when we get home. My, my husband is a, um, a, a work from home entrepreneur. He actually was a news anchor. Um, he went to Howard University, was born and raised in D.C., went to Howard University, um, uh, majored in journalism, was a news anchor in Charleston and in Raleigh. And um, shortly after we got married, he had his own kind of stress episode. His parents were ailing, high blood pressure, too much stress at work, decided to leave the anchoring job, leave the sales and marketing job that he was also doing with the news station, and uh, developed his own uh, web design, marketing, and graphic design company from home which then worked great for us because then we were able to kind of balance taking care of our children. He kept our children at home while working from home for the first two years of life. Um, and now that they are both in school, they're four and almost six, he is still, he works from home and is able to be hands-on. So if one of them gets sick or needs to be picked up early and, you know, so we, we balance that out. So he's wonderful. <laughs> um, pick a good partner, by the way. Pick you a good partner to help you in life. One that understands that uh, you can't do it all yourself and wants to be 50-50 and help, right? Pick good partners. Yeah. Um, what other questions do you guys have? I, mean, I feel like I'm rambling. So I've written some books. That has turned into a um, publishing consultant kind of a gig now that I do. So along with, you know, kind of writing a little bit, speaking, I've been able to kind of augment my income so much or, or to the point where I can kind of cut back on the the clinic work. So I try to take as many Fridays off as possible to rest, to be at home, to fold clothes or to do nothing, uh, especially now that my kids are in school 
or to write or help others learn how to write and publish their own books. So Swiner Publishing Company came out of my first book. You know, when you when you write a book and you self-publish, you have to establish, um, you know, a different company, an LLC, a separate company, so that you can earn income from your book. Um, so with that, I said, okay, well, what am I going to call my company? I was like, eh, Swiner Publishing. We'll call it that. <laughs> Amen. But lo and behold, I didn't know that the Lord was going to start sending people my way to publish, to learn how to publish, to, you know, learn from my mistakes, have me be be their accountability partner, hold their hand, show them how, you know, what worked for me, what didn't work for me. Um, And again, you know, now that my husband um, has been doing the web design, graphic design marketing company for the past seven to eight years, we work together. So he does the book cover designs and all that. I'm going to have some that are sitting right here just to kind of show you, but um, we work together on, you know, book cover designs and formatting. This is a client's book of mine, Um, how the book is going to look, how it's going to feel. We have a local printer. Ah, This This is our our most recent book. It's a collaborative book (laughs) called Thinking About Quitting Medicine, which is interesting. (laughs) Um, But we did it together. 13 of us made a bestseller and it's, um, it's a phenomenal book that helps. Uh, Dr. Victoria, I remember we've had conversations about this. She's like, what do you mean thinking about quitting? Aren't you, what does that mean? And, and it, 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 it encourages conversation about what's good, what's bad about medicine, the, the trauma that can happen throughout our training, work-life balance, self-care, how do we stay sane and, you know, decrease bad habits and, uh, develop good coping for this career that we've chosen. And so that's what that, but anyway, that birthed itself out of the first book that I made in Swiner Publishing Company. And now I feel like I can teach others about doing that and focusing more on what they're passionate about. You know, I have friends in medicine that are also bakers that are jewelry designers that are NFL cheerleaders that are (laughs) singers, dancers, Don't forget what you are most passionate about, okay? Yeah, 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 Latifah, yeah. Yes, definitely need a conversation, Dr. Victoria. Um, And Latifah, if you want uh, to purchase the book, definitely get in touch with me. Like I said, email me, um, and I'm, you know, available on on almost all social media at Doc Swiner, D-O-C-S-W-I-N-E-R. And I actually have a gift for you guys. So I I just um, released a free electronic book, a free ebook about five tips. No, don't quit. You don't have to quit, but you can cut back or you can do things differently, right? <laughs> um, I have a free ebook called Five Tips to Being a Superwoman Without Being Superwoman. Um, I work usually four days a week, Dr. Victoria. But if you want the free ebook, email me, cnswiner at gmail.com. Um, I will put you on our VIP email list and I'll shoot you that free ebook as a gift for you all sticking in with me. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I usually see patients four days a week, sometimes five, depending on how much, you know, money we need to make for the month, you know, because we are now private practice owners. Um, good Latifah, I'll follow you back. Uh, we are private practice owners. You eat what you kill. So, you know, if we work and do really well, there are uh, two MDs and two PAs that, um, form our group. And so if we all are working really well, making good numbers and I can cut back a little bit, if we're struggling or one's on maternity leave or one took a week vacation, I may need to amp up my Fridays. So my goal is to be able to at least not work Fridays. I would love to, God willing, um, to only work three days a week, take a day of rest. And then that extra day I would do more of Swiner Publishing stuff. Okay. All right, guys, like I said, it's been about a half hour. I don't want to bore you to death. I just wanted to introduce myself. I wanted to encourage you. I want you to be um, happy, joyful. Um, I want you to be motivated. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Victoria, for having this group. Like I said, I wish I had this when I was in school. This is a phenomenally supportive group. All the other attendings that are part of this group, you need to get in touch with them. You need to follow them. Um, I'm excited to hear everyone else, um, speaking on the series, uh, and share their wisdom. So let me know if you need me for folks in North Carolina, if you ever want to come out, hang out at the clinic, shadow, whatever. I'm here for you, okay? Get that free ebook. Email me so I can send it straight to you, okay? All right. Like I said, if you're watching the replay, asking questions, I'll come back and fill it, okay? All right. Dr. Victoria, last question said, when do you make time to write? 
I try to take Wednesdays off. I kind of write when I feel the need. Like I said, Fridays I try to be off. If I'm at the hairdresser, if I'm at the airport, you know, the, anytime that there's an extended wait period where I'm not really doing much, I usually take my laptop with me and make some, uh, make some notes. All right. Nice to meet you, Latifa. Latifa. Y'all be good. Have a blessed week and um, let's stay in touch, okay? Bye-bye.